We haven't talked about Manchester United for a while. Well, um, I've not been in since Wednesday, that's why. <laughs> uh, taking a look at what's going on, uh, Fan Matter, Jesse Lingard, Nemanja Matic, Ralph Rangnick, Paul Pogba, Cavani and Matt Judge. Well, what position did Ralph Rangnick play? <laughs> I tell you, we didn't play a very good one. He was, he was, but I tell you what, I look at, you know the one thing I look at looking at that? Jesse Lingard wasted another year. Yeah. Yeah, and he wanted out, didn't he? He wanted out before. Uh, for more on this, let's welcome in, shall we, former Ajax midfielder and Dutch international, uh, Marciano Vink is with us once again. Uh, lots to talk about with regards to what's going to happen next season for Manchester United, Marciano. Let's start off, shall we, with Ten Hag. Right man for the job yeah. in your eyes? Uh, the perfect man for the job. Uh, Ten Hag, uh, you know, he did a tremendous job uh, at Ajax and, um, well, he was backed, uh, of course, by uh, Mark Overmars. That's really important for him to succeed in uh, Man United, being backed by the board, being backed by the technical director. Uh, Overmars, uh, along the way, uh, had his back and he, he did a tremendous job. Four and a half years, he gave the, the, the audience, he gave Ajax a face again, you know, and, um, well, he left the club on a high, so I hope for him that he's going to do really well at Man United and especially that they give him the time to do well. He's taking over, though, Marciano, a team that is so fractured. There seems to be so many problems within that squad. Yeah. How is he going to be able to address that? Yeah, first of all, you need to uh, get the players in and they really need to want to play for Man United. And, of course, Man United is not in the Champions League. They're in the Europa League. Uh, that will affect probably uh, some players because they want to play uh, in the Champions League. For instance, Frankie de Jong, I think he will be brilliant at Man United. He's a player Man United needs because uh, the transition between the defence and midfield, just the style of play, the dominant style of play, he is the man who can, who can give it and, and he knows Ten Hag, of course. In defence, they need uh, uh, to reinforce and the name Timber is being, uh, yeah, being named as one of the mm, probably um, guys they want to bring in. And mm. Timber, in my opinion, he's a, a very gifted young player. He's uh, given Ajax already on his very ju juvenile age very much. And he's um, always comfortable on the ball. He's a good defender. But most of all, he anticipates really well. So those kinds of players you need to bring in to get Man United to a higher level. I know for I England, they're not uh, the, the common names or the, the well-known names, but you need to get start playing football again. I have seen many matches of Man United and it was lacking pace. It was lacking football. There were too many players, uh, yeah, maybe satisfied by playing for Man United and not eager to win, not eager to uh, to play for the club. So he has to change uh, the behaviour, the mentality in the club, and it's going to take a while. Frankie de Jong, as you mentioned, of course, heavily linked to a move to Manchester United. Uh, this is what Lou van Hol had to say about one of his Dutch internationals. He came out and said, Frankie de Jong always plays well with the national team. Here we try to play him to his strengths. Uh, de Jong yes. also added to that, saying, I play a lot differently here than I do at Barca. I think this suits me much better. I like to be the first player to receive the ball from the defenders. If you, if you were to offer him some advice, both of these after that 4-1 victory against Belgium, would you tell him yeah. to leave Barcelona? Um, I know Frankie a little bit, Frankie de Jong, and he is an eager player. He wants to prove himself. He, he, is, he is not satisfied with, with his role, but he is not satisfied with uh, his performance at Barcelona. For sure, he wants to do better and he wants to prove everybody that he's the right man. But as long as uh, Busquets is playing in his role, it's going to be very difficult. For me, it's a no-brainer to go to Man United and, and um, yeah, link up again with, uh, with your former manager and, and just give Man United a new face. And for me, that's a more challenging thing than waiting for Busquets to uh, retire. Makes sense? Well, I, I understand that he doesn't want to... He doesn't want to leave Barcelona... In a, in a sense that they haven't seen the best of him. But is that going to happen if he's going to be, continue to be played where he's being played? Mm -hmm. 
So then it becomes exactly. a personal decision. It becomes a personal decision. You know, he is the player. We've seen him quite a lot at Barcelona getting in the box, making those late runs. But quite often in games, you don't see him getting on the ball. That's because Busquets, for years, has been the fulcrum of what they do. It all goes through sort of him. <sighs> maybe yeah. he'll get maybe he'll get that at Manchester United. I, I don't know. It's a, it's a difficult one to answer because it's such a great club, Barcelona, albeit with its problems. Uh, but we're certainly, I don't think there's any debate about we're not seeing the best of, and haven't seen the best, of Frankie de Jong at Barcelona. How much of a difference does it make, Craig, that he's played under Ten Hag before? Oh, well, a big difference. A big difference. I think a lot of players are drawn to managers that they can, that they have a, a good feeling to, a good relationship with, who they think is a player and you think is a player. The manager understands what's getting the best out of you. And, and obviously Manchester United with all their problems, are still a huge club. It's trying to convince the likes of De Jong and others that it's not going to be too long before they're back in that pack with City and Liverpool challenging domestically and in a European front. But, but having a former manager potentially wanting you it is, is a big deal. Marciano, how do the Dutch fans yeah. see it? Where do they want him to go? Do they want him to stay at Barca or go to United? You know, Barcelona is uh, is uh, very popular in Holland because of the the, the history, the Dutch players th that have been playing there. So everybody sees the romantic sides of Barcelona, but um, you know, uh, for me, it's just all about getting Frankie De Jong uh, up to his best level. And I do believe that uh, Man United is going to be the place where he he can develop and also help Man United get back where in my opinion they belong because he is a special player he's a guy who can dribble who can uh, uh, put players on the wrong foot he can create situation he like how he uh, um, guided uh, Nathan Ake in the in the match against Belgium where he should be playing you know higher up He's a, he's a leader. He's a really a leader. And I do believe, honestly, that Man United is lacking leaders. Uh, of course, uh, they have uh, great players, but leaders, besides Ronaldo, I, I don't see them. And you need somebody who is going to make the transition from defense to midfield and, and start directing the play. Uh, you mentioned Jurian Timber before. Obviously, an exciting young defender. But it's a big ask, yeah. isn't it, to come to Manchester United and, what, take the place of either Harry Maguire this, or Varane? But maybe he, he can play alongside Harry Maguire. But this guy is ice cold. What this guy has shown in Champions League against Haaland, what he has shown in the national team uh, already uh, on this age, he, he doesn't blink. And, and that's uh, special. This guy is so comfortable on the ball. And, you know... What I already said, he anticipates like the best. And for me, a defender needs to anticipate. You know, you can be a strong defender, you can be tall, but if you don't know how to anticipate where the ball is going or be ahead of the uh, attacker, you know, then you're not a good defender. But this guy, he anticipates like the best. So for me, it's uh, somebody who could easily play in the in the Premier League, but also could help uh, Man United uh, from the back. Uh, football-wise. Do you think Timber will start in the World Cup? Uh, uh, yeah, I think so, because now uh, there's this discussion going on in Holland. Uh, we have, of course, uh, now all of a sudden we have these tremendous uh, defenders like uh, Van Dijk, uh, um, we have De Ligt, De Vrij, all playing for top teams, Nathan Ake. But this guy, Jurian Timber, he, he yeah, benched uh, De Ligt and De Vrij, two world-class uh, defenders in Italy. So, um, but he's doing his job. You know, he's, you saw it uh, in the match against Belgium. He's, he's cool with it, with his, uh, with his performance, but also he knows what to do, and especially he knows what not to do. And that's, I think, his, uh, yeah, strength. Final question, looking at the fact, obviously, Ten Hag now at Manchester United, how much does that raise the profile of already a huge club, I imagine, in the Netherlands to another level? Uh, sorry, again? One, one, Ten Hag one. taking over at United now. How much yeah. are they going to become, like, the Dutch club? Uh, I don't know. We had already Van Gaal over there. It wasn't a big success. <laughs> but, um, you know... 
Um, Erik Den Haag is uh, from the east part of Holland, where people are down to earth, you know, uh, uh, no nonsense, a little bit stubborn. But uh, I do believe that, uh, given time, Man United might be a Dutch uh, uh, favorite club. So uh, let's see. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.